In this video, we're going to talk about orthogonal diagonalization. In our last video, we looked at an example where we diagonalized a symmetric matrix. In the diagonalization, A equals P, D, P inverse, we saw that in the matrix P, the columns were orthogonal, meaning that the eigenvectors were all orthogonal to each other. We say that a matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable if we can write A equals P, D, P inverse, where the columns of P are orthogonal. In our last video, we proved that if A is symmetric, then any eigenvectors from different eigenspaces will be orthogonal to each other. One thing that we can conclude from that result is if A is an n by n matrix with n distinct eigenvalues, then A is orthogonally diagonalizable because A is going to have n orthogonal eigenvectors. But it turns out we can say more. If A is a symmetric matrix, then it's always diagonalizable, meaning that the dimension of its eigenspaces will always add up to n. Moreover, we can also say that if A is an orthogonally diagonalizable matrix, then we know it's symmetric. These two statements give us the theorem an n by n matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable if and only if A is symmetric. We won't be going through a proof of this theorem in this video, but I do want to go through an example of diagonalizing a 3 by 3 symmetric matrix that doesn't have three distinct eigenvalues. So in this example, we're asked to diagonalize the matrix A with entries 1, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 1. So the first step in diagonalizing A is to find the eigenvalues. I need to solve the characteristic equation determinant of A minus lambda I equals 0. So I'm looking at the determinant of 1 minus lambda, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 2 minus lambda, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 1 minus lambda. When we calculate this determinant, we get minus lambda cubed plus 27 lambda plus 54. Factoring this polynomial, we get negative lambda minus 6 lambda plus 3 squared. Set this equal to 0 and solve for lambda, we get that lambda equals 6 and negative 3. So those are my eigenvalues. Now, for each eigenvalue, I want to find the corresponding eigenspace. So let's start with lambda equals 6. To find the corresponding eigenspace, I want to find the null space of a minus 6i. So I want to look at the matrix, negative 5, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 8, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 5. When we row reduce this, we get the matrix 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 0. So this tells me that the null space of a minus 6i is the span of the vector 1, negative 1 half, 1. And we can multiply this vector by 2 and write this as the span of 2, negative 1, 2. This way I avoid any fractions. Next, we want to find the eigenspace for lambda equals negative 3. So I want to look at the null space of a plus 3i. So the matrix A plus 3i is 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 2, 4. This row reduces to 1, negative 1 half, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Which tells me that the null space of A plus 3i is the span of two vectors. I have the vector 1 half, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. Again, to avoid fractions, I can take the first vector and multiply it by 2. So I can rewrite this as the span of the vectors 1, 2, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. So now we're ready to form the diagonal matrix D and the matrix P. D is the diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues, so that's going to be 6, 0, 0, 0, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, negative 3. And P has columns that are the corresponding eigenvectors. So that's going to be 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 
and lastly negative 1, 0, 1. Now this is a diagonalization for A, however this is not an orthogonal diagonalization. If you look at the matrix P, we notice that the columns aren't all orthogonal. You might observe that the eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal with each other. Right, The first and the second columns are orthogonal with each other, and the first and the third columns are orthogonal with each other. However, the eigenvectors in the second and the third column both belong to the eigenvalue negative 3, and those right now are not orthogonal with each other. To fix this, what we can do is find an orthogonal basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals negative 3. So what we're going to do is apply the Gram-Schmidt process on the basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals negative 3. Let's call this vector 1, 2, 0, x1, and the vector negative 1, 0, 1, x2. Our first step in the Gram-Schmidt process is to let v1 be x1. So my first orthogonal basis vector is 1, 2, 0. Then to get v2, the second orthogonal basis, I'm going to take x2 and subtract the projection of x2 onto v1. So that's x2 minus x2 dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 times the vector v1, which gives me negative 1, 0, 1 minus the dot product of x2 with v1. So that's going to be negative 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 0 divided by v1 dot v1. So that's 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared all times v1. So that's 1, 2, 0. Simplifying this, we get the vector negative 4 fifths, 2 fifths, and 1. So our orthogonal basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals negative 3 is 1, 2, 0, and negative 4 fifths, 2 fifths, 1. So if we want an orthogonal diagonalization for A, we would have P equals the vector 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, and negative 4 fifths, 2 fifths, 1. As we mentioned in our last video, it's helpful to have orthonormal columns for P because it makes finding P inverse much easier. So in the orthonormal diagonalization, we would take each column of P and divide it by its length. So we get P equals 2 thirds, negative 1 third, 2 thirds, then 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5, and 0, then negative 4 over root 45, 2 over root 45, and 5 over root 45. So if we want to write A equals P D P inverse, we would have 2 thirds, negative 1 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5, 0, negative 4 over root 45, 2 over root 45, 5 over root 45 times the diagonal matrix 6, 0, 0, 0, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, negative 3 times P inverse. But since P has orthonormal columns, P inverse is just a transpose of P. So that's going to have rows 2 thirds, negative 1 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5, 0. And lastly, negative 4 over root 45, 2 over root 45, and 5 over root 45. So that's the orthonormal diagonalization for A. And that's where I'll end this video. In our next video, we'll talk about something called the spectral theorem and also spectral decomposition.